I'm going to show you how to enter a temperature profile from scratch. Uh, in order to do this, you go from the main page using the editor menu and click on Edit Create Profile. That'll bring up the temperature editor and um, then you just start entering your segment um, start and stop temperatures uh, and ramp rate or duration it will automatically calculate for you the um, ramp rate if you put in the duration or the duration if you put it put in the ramp rate okay so the 70 is in already filled into the first start temperature because it assumes that you're going to start from room temperature. Now this might be a bad assumption if you have a warm kiln, but uh, in order to load it up it has to be relatively chilly. So let's just go with that assumption. Now let's assume I'm using a green mold that I'm going to cure at the same time I'm ramping up to melt some glass into it. So it starts at 70 degrees and I'm going to go to 300 degrees and then I'm going to hold and I'm going to ramp that at a rate of 50 degrees per hour and you'll see that it automatically calculated 4.6 hours Now, uh, something that I forgot to do was to select the scale. The scale is already set to Fahrenheit, so I'll leave it as it is. As it is. Temp time needs to be in hours. The worksheet for the profile doesn't know the difference. It, uh, it, when the profile is saved off, it remembers what units you used. Um, and then you can see it automatically graphs the profile as you're putting it in so you can see if you made a mistake or not easily so now you see that we've got the first segment going 70 to 300 degrees at a rate of 50 degrees per hour ramp rates assumed to be per unit time whether it's minutes or whether you selected minutes or hours in this case it's hours so 50 per hour instead of 50 per minute so now it's going to, once it gets to 300, it's going to hold. And you see it automatically it calculates that your end temperature is the same as your start temperature if you put an H in. Now how long do you want it to hold for? Well, in the case of the molds I use, uh, I like to have like a 3 hour hold time to cook the water out of them. and now you see it's automatically updated and you can see that segment there now once it's held for at 300 for the time to cook uh, the water out he's going to ramp up to 800 at the same 50 degrees rate 50 degrees per hour and it's going to hold again these things have to be staged up to the 2000 degrees because at each level it gets more water out so again I'm gonna hold for three hours at 800 degrees and here's you can see profile updated the uh, jog back to the zero number there in the very last segment is because you haven't entered anything yet then it just assume zeros okay so now it's going to ramp up to 1500 degrees again at 50 degrees per hour it's going to hold for three hours again and again you get here you can see it the three holds in the profile are the steps that it's a stair step pattern, right? So now I'm going to go for the full on melt temperature of 2000 degrees. 
and it's going to ramp again at 50 and it's going to hold at 2000 long enough to flow the Pyrex into the mold form. So we'll give that about five hours. Pyrex flows pretty slowly at 2000 degrees. Now it's held at the full flow temperature. I want to take it down to a uh, temperature that's above the annealing region of Pyrex. So I always assume for tolerances that's about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to descend at 100 degrees per hour. That's a negative 100 when you enter it. Now, um, in going from 1,000 degrees to 700 degrees, I'm going to use um, minus one degree, one degrees per hour. It's very slow. I uh, can't take any stress in these technical glasses. And so now, the scale of the graph has changed because the temperature scale has gotten much longer in hours. We're up to 300 hours duration. And from 700, we can now start accelerating downwards. We'll go to 500 degrees at minus 10 per hour. And down to room temperature at minus 50 per hour. And you can see the graph reflects this. And uh, this is a scan of the durations. It will take about 400 hours to run. So you, as I said, you want to make sure you get the t temperature and time scales correct. And you want to select the correct sensor type that you're using in your setup. I always use type K thermocouples. Yours may differ, but... It, uh, then you want to do uh, save the profile off and it will automatically put it in a directory underneath your install. It's uh, under profiles in your under your install directory. Um, oh, and there tells me I have an error. I didn't put an end in there. So I come down here and I put the E in the action column. And try it again save as. Ah, there we go. It parsed it and verified that it's happy. So um, I'm going to call this Pyrex Mirror Melt Profile and save it off. And now uh, it displays the profile name in the display area and in the prompt area it shows that the profile has been saved indeed confirms that now in order to go back to the to run the profile you click on exit and it cues you to verify you saved the profile off that's a just to prevent you going back and losing everything you've entered so you click OK and now you're back out now I can um, Go ahead and run the profile and you do that by opening the profile and uh, we look for Pyrex mirror melt click on double click on it and you see in the prompting area area that the profile syntax is valid and that the profile was loaded and you'll recognize this graph so all you have to do then is run it